concerned that guys this is for your concern that i have started recording of this particular session and recording will be shared with later on okay so guys first of all let us see that uh, yesterday we were talking about that what is infrastructure what are different type of cloud computing environment do we have like iaas paas saas these sort of different things we discussed moreover what are the differences between all then we uh, discussed about like what are going to be our responsibility as aws administrator and what are going to be responsibility of cloud cloud service provider which is known as csp so that kind of differentiation we try to understand understand moreover we try to understand like uh, what is private cloud what is public cloud and what is hybrid cloud what is gov cloud that kind of infrastructure also we try to understand aside to that we try to understand like what are the advantages of working with cloud computing environment like there is no need to go for separate data center rack cctv red killers and all so these kind of components actually we do not want or we do not need to purchase in advance in order to set up a website right guys so in order to move ahead we need to discuss about this particular console as soon as we log in okay let me log out from this and let me try to log in once again okay let me try to log in back this is the url here console.amazon.aws.amazon.com this is a url guys keep this thing in mind there are two type of accounts which usually we have there is a account known as root user whenever there is a account created so there are two kind of options available in order to log into it first of all it is known as root user so during interview a person might ask you okay do you log into your aws account with root user or with iam guys iam stands for identity and access management i'll repeat it again it stands for identity and access management okay so what user do you use in order to log into your aws account or when you perform your day to day routine what user do you select so guys we are supposed to say here i am user and why is that so because in most of organization because of compliance purpose root user is kept very secure and when i say very secure so what does that mean so let us say we are three guys in an organization let us say it is uh, ajay it is vaibhav and kishore so ajay is working as ciso chief information uh, uh, chief Sec chief information risk officer moreover it is cio chief information officer and let us say the third one is working as the head of governance so a single person will not be able to log into this account and how is that possible let us say ajay is operation head so ajay will have the user and password the user id and password ajay will have let us say it is webhub so the particular mfa like multi factor authentication will be set up on ajay's number or maybe webhub's number the second person you can give you can like think of any random name right so a person will have username and password another person will will have to share the otp reason being this is that critical account that it can perform anything a root user can log into account and terminate each and every resource running within the within that account without any consent without any additional approval required what if this sort of things happens let us say there is a dispute between organization and the employee and the person who has access to your root account is not happy with the organization and try and, and decides to delete everything so there will be no single way to log into that account single handedly at least two people will be there and their consent will be required in order to allow root account to log into that environment moreover as a normal aws administrators we do not have access to this root account are we clear with that guys yes sir so usually we are going to work with iam user only which we will learn later on how to create how to manage how to assign access what kind of like access do we assign we will go to that access allocation later on right now i am going to log into this user with my account id 
that is servergyan01 at gmail.com. This is my root account ID. Guys, creating AWS account is as simple as creating your Facebook account. There is only one additional thing required, a credit card in order to enable the payment method. And second thing here is that whenever we are trying to uh, like verify a credit card, only two rupees, two Indian rupees will be deducted from it. And that two are refundable, maybe within a 72 hours, once your verification uh, like gets confirmed, you will get those two rupees back into the same credit card uh, like uh, account. Okay. So guys, this is the dashboard. This is known as console home. Those guys who are familiar with this, that is good. Those who are not, let me tell you. So initially this console used to be a little different. Okay. So these are the particular services which I have recently visited. Moreover, if you want to view all services, whatever AWS provides, we can click here. And now there are different categories of the services. So guys, these services are distributed based on the category. Like there is a first category which AWS provides, which is known as compute. So we have EC2 category, we have light say, Lambda, Batch, Elastic Beanstalk, Serverless Application Repository, Outpost, Image Builder, App Runner, and SimSpace Waiver. So we have these many services available as of today. Moreover, containers are a buzz in market as of today. So we have different kind of container services like Elastic, like uh, Elastic Container Registry, Container Service, Kubernetes Service, and OpenShift. Next component comes here for storage. We have different categories of storage here, such as we have S3, we have EFS, FSX, Glacier Storage Gateway, Backup, and Disaster Recovery kind of. So we have database category, migration and transfer. For example, if you want to migrate something from on-prem to cloud or, or from cloud to on-prem, so we can use this kind of services here, which are known as migration and transfer services. Then we have network and content delivery. We sir, have sir to... one, one question, yes. Please. Yes, please. In migration, in migration, all the services will be used during migration. Otherwise, uh, some of the uh, applicants, uh, some of the services will be used. Means there are uh, eight services are. Uh, actually AWS migration hub application. What is the use of that all, all you will use? Okay, so uh, see, when we plan to do migration, that depends on the kind of topics or the kind of component we are trying to migrate. For example, if it is your data transfer, then you will use Isno family. Like there will be particular drive, which AWS will send to your data center. You will copy your data into that drive, that drive will be sent back to Amazon data center. They will copy the data like, like a very huge USB you can consider it to be. For example, you are trying to migrate your database. So these are online services. If your data size is small, then you can copy, then you can use data my database migration services. If your data is really huge, maybe pentabyte or exabyte of data, data size you have, then it's no family you will use in order to initialize initial data, a transfer from on-prem to cloud or from cloud to on-prem. Later on, you can use this particular service. Okay. So there will be a combination of services which is going to be used in order to set up this kind of infrastructure. Right? Okay, sir. Okay. Then we have developer tools. So those who are working as developer or as developer only, or those who are trying to become AWS administrator, but their core strength is development. Like they have been working as a developer for quite some time. So these particular tools are going to be really helpful for them because whatever kind of tool you see here on this particular. So if you try to become AWS DevOps, like so many people available in this particular forum are aware of that there is a profile known as Azure DevOps. So if you want to become AWS DevOps, then these are the particular tools which you need to explore. Moreover, we have for robotic blockchain, for analytics, for game development, internet of things, which, are, which is known as IoT, right? So we have IoT core and different kind of components are available here, like end user computing, if you want to do, for example, if you want to provide any specific kind of workstation to a user, then you can create virtual desktop here. 
uh, you have AR, uh, like AR and VR, augmented reality, virtual reality, you have that kind of component here. If you want to talk about like, uh, like the particular companies like Hotstar uh, or the particular companies like Amazon who are really working in like real-time streaming or web streaming, then media service solutions are available here. AWS cost management. So if you are really interested and you are assigned a task wherein you need to confirm that the current current cost, whatever you are paying is appropriate or it is like you are paying extra amount to AWS, it can be optimized or not. So these are kind of tools which you can use in order to set or in order to like uh, optimize your budgeting, optimize your cost. Moreover, we have these many tools for security, identity and compliance purpose. We have IAM, resource access manager, Cognito, secret manager, guard duty inspector, like these many components we have here. Right. So end of the day, whatever kind of component you want, you can use here. That will be depending on person to person and organization to organization use cases. Every single organization cannot use all the tools. Reason being somewhere it is required, somewhere it is not. So as we discuss, like what kind of components we are going to discuss within this particular session, which we are going through right now. So I have already told you and moreover, if we want to go for that, so definitely guys, these are the particular topics which we are going to go through. Because these are, these are such the topics which are mostly used in every single organization. Like we are going to talk about EC2, EBS, load balancer, auto scaling, S3, IAM, RTS. So like all the topics are going to be covered here. Okay, so now guys, any questions so far? Uh, first of all, let me ask you guys. Sir, are we going to take any live project at the end? So, okay, when we talk about live project, so I'll be keeping this particular uh, like topic that whenever we are discussing any component, so I'll keep the particular topic in mind that if you are working in a real production environment, then how does the requirement come? How you need to uh, like fetch the information from developer? then how do you need to incorporate that within this particular environment? So everything I will keep up to production level. But yes, if you talk about that, are you going to display any kind of real project implemented? So that will not be possible because as per the particular terms and conditions, anyone signs with their current organization. So real infrastructure cannot be made visible during any scenario, yes, we can try to build the same infrastructure as it is built in production. Moreover, I will give, I will assign you a couple of tasks in order to create EC2 machine, load balancer. So same kind of things which you have to perform during real life when you are, as we are when you are uh, being part of any organization. So same kind of task I'll assign you guys. First of all, I'll demonstrate. Then after you guys will have to perform you, perform it within your account and then Next day, maybe I can ask you to perform the same task before everyone who is going to be part of that group. Okay, sir. Great. Okay, sounds good. Let's move ahead. So guys, this is the particular category which we are going to take first of all, which is known as compute. And within compute, we are going to talk about EC2 first. So guys, what does this EC2 mean? Elastic Cloud Computing Services. Very good. Okay, so before we begin, so let us try to understand this console. So this is console home, the particular icon as you see here on this particular corner, this is known as console home. If you see here, all the services are available. If you click on this particular, so you will be able to see all the like major services, recently visited services are listed here. And if you talk about the particular service by category, then you will be able to see all the services here. Based on your requirement, whatever you want, you can click on that and, and all the services will be visible. Right? All the services will be visible here on this particular section. Whatever you click here, that particular list will be available here at this particular section. Okay. Now, there used to be a different kind of console. Earlier it used to be, but right now, obviously, it has been modified and that is no longer available. 
going forward like that is in transformation mode so you guys may be able to see it within your account but if you are going to create your account like maybe after this particular class or maybe after a couple of weeks so this particular dashboard may not be visible to you so the recent dashboard which has been introduced by aws that is the so this one where where we are supposed to work okay so now guys we need to understand like all the services can be found here moreover if you are aware of any service which you would like to look for so for example i would like to look for here route 53 so i can look for i can search here for route 53 and that particular service will be visible for me like there is a particular box to search any kind of service whatever is your requirement you can directly search it from here if you know the name moreover if you want to work from CLI mode, a couple of guys are there who say that I would like to work with CLI, like command line interface, or maybe I want to use with the SDK, software development kit. So guys, this particular option known as cloud shell is given to you. You can start utilizing this particular tool as and when you want. So you will be given a particular command line interface where from you can access. Like you need to pre-install a couple of tools, like, uh, like you have AWS, CLI, Python, Node.js, and more are already installed here. A storage included 1 GB, storage per AWS region, and save files and settings. So whatever you will do, so these particular settings will get saved here. So this is known as AWS CLI. CLI stands for? What does it mean, CLI? Command, Command. 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 So that kind of steps are available here. So this is known as cloud shell. You can perform any kind of operation from here. Let us say AWS, uh, like AWS uh, S3 LS. So if you have any kind of S3 bucket available in the accounts, then it will obviously display that. Right, guys? Fine. So this is in US East 1, North Virginia. If you want to go to some other reason, so definitely you can go back to other reasons as well. And guys, even this service is free. You don't have to pay any additional charges in order to utilize this. So let us get back to our previous dashboard. So this is our dashboard for EC2 machine. This is our help center. Like if you want to create a ticket, for example, there is unwanted bill in your account. Like you did not utilize service or maybe you are new to these services and so you have utilized any kind of service which is actually not supposed to be utilized by you. There are unwanted bills. So you can raise a support ticket to AWS team and they will help you to waive off your uh, account, your whatever amount is there. That is only depending on the particular situation you are in. For example, if you have unwantedly, you, you, like recently you have created an account, maybe like 10 days before, maybe a month or maybe two months before, then obviously AWS is supposed to help you guys. But if you keep on repeating the stuff, then AWS will not waive off your, uh, your charges and you will have to pay it. So be very careful at the moment when you are going to create any kind of resource within AWS environment. So uh, if you want to know whether AWS is going to perform any activity within their account, so you can go to the schedule changes section. This, this is a particular section known as other notifications. Over here, this is known as event logs. Then after we have, we are not, we have here like uh, this one, support center. If you want to like uh, look for support from AWS, you can raise a support ticket here. Now guys, this is a particular section like, AWS is working across the globe right now, right? So wherever you see there is some of the other AWS data centers available. So there are two things when we talk about AWS data centers. So guys, data centers are known as availability zone. Once again, I'll repeat it. Data centers are known as availability zone. But when you talk about these names, so these names are written in like US East 1, North Virginia. So guys, this is known as reason. Now, during interview, if you are if you are going to appear as a fresher or maybe like if you are going to appear as experienced as well, then this is a particular thing which you should definitely know. What is the difference between reason and availability zone? So guys, reason is a geographical area. For example, North Virginia. Now, 
North Virginia is really huge geographical area where AWS has set up six different data centers. So North Virginia is a particular region where six data centers are available. So those data centers are known as availability zone. And this region is known as the combination of all those six data centers. So we do not need to know the actual physical location of those data centers. We need not to know about, but yes, we, what we need to know here is that where we are operating currently. Moreover, if you see here, so Asia Pacific, like we have a particular data center in Mumbai. So it is a known as region. So there are multiple data centers created in Mumbai region. Okay. Then we talk about like uh, Osaka, Seoul, Singapore, Sydney, Tokyo. So these also have couple of data centers within these. If you go down, if you scroll down, so guys, you will get to, you will get to know like Asia Pacific, Hyderabad is also a location where AWS has created its another data center. It, like that has also been declared as another region in India. There are two different reasons available in India itself. So guys, you can assume that how big the particular approach is going to be just like North Virginia and North California, there are two different reasons. So the same way we have here Hyderabad as well as Mumbai. It means more than six data centers are available in, 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 in India itself for AWS. So we have two reasons in India and we have at least six data centers. Are we clear with that guys? Like what is the difference between data like availability zone and reason? Okay. <laughs> Guys, sir, 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 region can have Mumbai, Hyderabad, Tokyo like this, okay? No, yeah. And availability zone, uh, that could be a different, different availability zone in that region, right? Yes, a single region can have multiple availability zones. Like the particular like uh, region, which is known as Mumbai, may have different data centers, maybe two or maybe three data centers Mumbai can have. And the same thing will be applied with Hyderabad. So Hyderabad will have separate data centers from Mumbai. And these will be at least two or three. Okay, two or three availability zone. Uh, means data center means uh, availability zone, so, right, yes. sir? AWS ensures that at least two data centers or more than two data centers will be made available within every single region. Okay. So for example, if you want to enable those reasons, you will have to drop an email to use these reasons. You need to enable them in AWS Billing Console. You can use this AWS reason after AWS finishes preparing it for most accounts. Preparation is completed and in a few minutes, right? So if you want to enable these reasons, then definitely guys, you will be able to use it, but a couple of options are there which we need to enable and there is no there is no extra fees applied in order to enable these reasons. Because this is my testing account, I usually use this account for testing and from uh, for teaching purpose, for training purpose. So I don't need those reasons. Being a student, guys, keep this thing in mind, whatever you perform, just opt any one or at max two reasons in order to create your resources. Why it is so? Guys, if you see, as soon as I log in or I log out from here, I need to see this dashboard in the same manner as it is right now. No instance running, no elastic IP address associated, no load balancer, no snapshot, no volume, no instances, no auto scaling group. So this look, this should be looking like this. I can have like key pairs, like SSH key pairs I can have here. Security groups also I can have. Security groups are just like firewall rules. But guys, just yes, keep this thing in mind this account should be looking very clean. If we do not take care of this particular part, which means as a student, we are likely to pay unwanted charges to AWS just because of ignorance. So right now I'm not going to work here uh, like in North Virginia, I would like to select Mumbai region because Mumbai is obviously like uh, close to us, like wherever we are performing in India. So Mumbai is really nearby us. This is has this is sir, actually these are the physical data center, right? There are all the hardware will be available in all availability. Centers. Yes, all different hardware will be available in all the data centers. 
okay okay now so if you want to know that this is like ec2 dashboard here for this reason there is another option available here known as ec2 global view what does that mean there used to be interview question like if i want to know like what all reasons are there where i might have created ec2 resources so how do we answer that so guys keep this thing but this particular thing in mind that we have a particular service which is known as ec2 global view so we can see what like enable regions 17 subnet 58 in 17 regions instances three in one reason vpcs 18 in 17 reason like one like uh, one reason might have two different vpcs created subnets security groups volume if i want to see here that where my volume is created so i would be able to see that like zero volume in zero reason so that I, like 17 volume in seven reason so that kind of stuff i can easily see here like there is no instance running right okay. this is a complete dashboard so using this particular dashboard i shall be able to see like if i might have created any kind of resource which i might have forgot to remove so i can definitely explore with this particular option moreover go back to this particular console where i was working before so guys these are known as events the other service which are which we are going to see here these are known as events now guys what does that mean so event means if aws is going to perform any activity or is is there any currently activity going on for example there is some maintenance activity going on some servers are down couple of customers data is impacted so if there is any event going on so you will be able to find out that event under this particular section which is known as events now guys tags so tags are additional naming convention obviously we will discuss this in more detailed manner when we will be creating ec2 machines and all so what are tags tags are just naming convention to any object like why is this object created who is owner of it like a like couple of examples I would like to give. First of all, let us say that if I create one EC2 machine, so I will have to declare that, okay, if I'm going to create this machine, then who has requested, like I can define a tag with the name of requester. Who is requester? I can define the name against that. Who is going to be owner of that? Let us, I can define any name there, ABC. What environment this machine is going to be used in? Is it going to be in production or is it going to be in non-production environment? That is fine. What kind of operating system is being installed here? I can define that. Moreover, what kind of software it for this particular OS is supposed to be running? It is going to be MySQL, Apache, Nginx, Tomcat, or XYZ, whatever. Those kind of tags definitely I can help here. Now limits. Whenever we create a particular AWS account, so by default, AWS allows us some certain limit in order to utilize the resources. For example, if you want to select how many dedicated hosts can I use in this account, the current limit is zero. Moreover, if you see here, like a couple of things, like things will be available where I would be able to see, like what I can do here is, I can create 20 classic load balancer. I can create 3000 target groups. I can create 50 network load balancer. I can create 50 application load balancer. So guys, these are my current limits. As of today, if I want to provision load balancer, so I can provision these many load balancers without any additional requirement. But yes, let us say I have already created 20 classic load balancers. I'll discuss about what is load balancer, how does it work, what is the difference between classic network and application. We will discuss later on. But right now, we are trying to understand this particular page. Okay, so let us say, if someone is going to ask, okay, what is the limit? That let us say you are facing an interview and someone, have, someone might ask you, okay, what is the limit of AWS VPC creation? How many default, how many VPCs can you create within your AWS account? So guys, the answer here is, five that you can create five vpcs by default without asking without asking aws in order to increase limit you can easily create five aws accounts right guys okay 
Then reserved instances. So what does that mean? How many reserved instances can you run? 20. How many VPC security groups per region you can have? 2,500. How many route tables per VPC you can have? 200 route tables you can have. So these are some default limits. If you want, you can definitely, there is a particular option, like you can request for limit increase. Select anyone and you can hit here for request limit increase and AWS will definitely, uh, like a couple of questions will be asked, okay, what are your current requirement? What is going to be your future expectation? Like sort of your growth path, they would like to know, like AWS team would like to understand your growth path. And after that, they would allow you to have additional resources within the account. Are we clear with that, guys? Yes. Sir. Okay. So, guys, this is kind of instance information. Like, if you have any kind of inst instances, like either it is running, stopped, or any kind of instances you have created, and those will be listed down here. Now, if you want to create an instance, obviously we will see that how do we create instance today, at least one instance we will definitely create. How do we create what other options are available? So we will discuss that later on. But yes, today, at least one EC2 machine we are going to create. Guys, how long does it take to create a machine? Hardly two minutes, three minutes. Okay. But I okay. will not be able to create a machine within two minutes. It takes at least one and a half hour to create one EC2 machine. How? I'll tell you. Do not worry. Because we will have to understand each and every use case. Like if we are clicking here, then why? If we do not click here, then what would happen? If we select this option, then what kind of result will it bring? If we do not click, then what are going to be like you advantage or disadvantage of it? So it takes me at least one and a half hour to create one EC2 machine. Okay, so uh, like instances now instance type so guys there are different kind of instances and this is an interview question as well guys so you can make a note of it so usually people discuss during interview okay what are the different type of ec2 machines you run within your aws environment so this kind of question and this kind of answers can be expected and can be given by only those who have actually worked within real production environment so guys, if you see here, there are different pages, there are different tabs here, right? Different pages, different tabs are available here where you can see like different type of and different hardware, different level of hardware is available here. I, I, like if you see P4D24.x last. So guys, what is what amount of RAM is allocated here? 96 CPU and what is the amount of RAM? 1152. Like these many GB of RAM is allocated with this. 8 terabyte storage associated, like 8000 GB. Approx 8 terabyte. This is SSD disk. So if you want to utilize it, you can definitely go for it. And sir, how to know that uh, how much charges will have to pay? Uh, I'm for going this? for that particular part only. I know that uh, these are common questions. So I'm just moving on to the in, 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 into that particular phase, uh, phase only that where we can see like how much do we need to pay if we select what kind of instances. So if you see here, this is a kind of instance. Instance family is P4D, size is 24X large, hypervisor is Nitro. So guys, apart from uh, like Zen, there is another kind of hypervisor which is known as Nitro. So this is hypervisor type, eBay supported root device here, dedicated host support true. These are some other options here. What is like clock speed rate here? What is like memory size? Moreover, these are the storage option here. This is about price. Uh, this is about pricing like 32.7726 USD per hour. So this is the, this is going to be amount. This is going to be cost like how much you will need to pay if you run this particular in machine here. If I, if I go back and if I tell you the mostly used instances within an organization, what are those? So guys, the very first kind of machine which is used within an organization that is T-type, like T3 dot, like 2x large. This is the very, very first, like I would not say 
like two x large is going to be the like exact criteria. Criteria it could be like large, it could be small, micro, or kind of. But yes, T three is the very first category which is mostly preferred to be used in an organization. And guys, if you see, you will be able to see the price as well. So how much we need to pay for eight CPU and thirty two GB of RAM? It is going to be zero point three three two eight USD. Okay. Next one is going to be C five dot. 2x large over here see the difference guys we are going to have eight cpu like cpu are going to be eight we are going to have six like 16 cpu here but if you see network speed with t type we are going to get up to five gigabits but when we talk about c5 it is going to be up to 10 gigabit right if you see the difference so guys which one is costlier here obviously this one c5x large Okay. And why is that? So we see CPU is same, memory just half, and 10 gig. Like because of network speed, a little prices are high. Moreover, if I select another one, see, end of the day, I want to have only eight CPU. Then based on the RAM, what is the requirement? You guys will be able to decide that what instance to use here. Next is going to be guys here, M5. Sir, one question. Uh, in network performance, it also depends on uh, internet speed. Obviously. Because let us say if you are trying to transfer a lot of data and that data has touched upon this particular speed or this particular like uh, bandwidth, okay. this particular capacity, then network will become a bottleneck for you. Okay, with the with the same speeds. Yes. Okay. Then next one is going to be R five dot two x large. So see guys here, the another kind of example here. It is going to be T two dot x large, C five dot two x large. Eight CPUs are constant are, are, are going to be like uh, same within all. If you see the like distribution of memory, that is different. Like over here, we have 32 and we have here 32. So if we compare the price of M5.2 X large and T2.2, uh, T3.2 X large, see the difference between, within price guys. This is cheaper and this is higher. Wherein you are, you are going to get eight CPU and 32 GB of RAM within, within both. Now, what is the difference between uh, like between price why is that so so guys let me tell you what happens whenever we select this kind of machine t3.2 x large so this comes with a kind of a specific okay uh, that is known as credit limit so this is kind of credit card so guys if you are aware that if we use credit card, so these credit card comes along with a predefined limit. These credit cards yes. come with a predefined limit. Let us say my credit card card limit is 10,000 rupees. I spent all the 10,000 rupees within first 25 days. Like from first to 25th, I have spent all the available amount within that credit card. Now what would happen? I would have that credit card with me, but that will not be usable going forward. Isn't it guys? The same thing, like if this particular machine is utilized extra, like this, if this machine is overutilized, then the credit amount goes nil. Then in that particular case, we will have to purchase additional uh, like credits which are known as CPU credits, which we will have to purchase additional credits here. So for that, we have to pay extra, wherein you can run whatever amount of load you want to run onto this. So the performance it will be depending only on the kind of like workload you are trying to put onto, onto these resources. So that is how guys it is going to work. So these are the majorly used instances within an organization. Either it is going to be T3 type, this is going to be C5, M5 or R5. Now, guys, why do I say that these are the mostly preferred instances? Let me select, let me give you one more example. Uh, 
mean sir these four uh, these four instances mostly used in uh, organizations where uh, yes like yes it's... so i would say like just if you have to give a particular answer that either it is t3 type c5 type m5 and r5 based on the cpu and ram combination you will keep on changing let me give you one more example here r5.4 x large see the difference here like we have doubled the cpu and doubled the ram if i go here r5.8 x large 32 cpu and 56 gb of ram getting point so class remains r5 only but okay there are two things the particular there is a dot t3 dot right this dot is a like uh, is a particular divider or is a particular like isolation point which is going to inform us about the family type and the hardware requirement so this section which comes after dot this is going to define the hardware capacity like as you see here like dot 2 x large 8 cpu and 64 gb of ram 4 x large just double the previous one previous one just 8 x large double the previous one like this is going to tell you the ratio c class has one upon two ratio like one cpu and two gb of ram one cpu two gb of ram eight cpu 16 gb of ram this comes one upon four ratio one cpu four gb of ram m class m class comes with one upon four ratio r like r class comes one upon eight clear guys yes yes sir okay now let me tell you what is the difference like there are some different category as well so let me remove this one this one this one this one and this one R4.4 x large and R6G.4 x large. So, guys, within this category, like R series, there are some different category classes. Like if you see R4.4 x large, what is going to be hardware size here? 16 CPU and 122 GB of RAM. Network speed is going to, is going to remain the same. It is, uh, we have already seen. Now we have another category. See R6G.4 X large. It is going to provide 16 CPU and 128 GB of RAM. What is the major difference here? The cost. It is 1.064 dollar per hour, wherein you are getting at least 6 GB of RAM less. It is going to provide you 1.008 USD, wherein like we are going to get same resources. And this is the kind of CPU which is provided R6G, G for, this stands for Graviton here. Gra like uh, Graviton, you can consider like Intel, AMD kind of processor. So the same way, Graviton is a kind of in-house developed processor by Amazon itself. Because it is in-house, Amazon does not have to pay to any other one for this. So this is kept a little cheaper, but yes, based on the performance, so performance is also a little low. That is known as ARM64. So, prices are low here. Are we clear with that, guys? Like within a single category, if we are going to select what kind of resources, so that will also make a difference that how much you will need to pay. So, guys, in most of cases, because like ARM is such a processor which, which performs low, let me show you that how. Uh, guys, any questions so far? Guys, any questions so far? Sir, this is Sudhir. Yes, Sudhir. Any questions? Yeah. yeah. So, how we will be identifying our application or, I mean, uh, this much of resources we need to, I mean, uh, resources we need to create? And this much of database we need to create and now what is that i mean how the traffic and each and everything how we will be calculating all these things 
वेरी गुड सो बिफोर मेकिंग एनी एप्लीकेशन लाइव देर इज अ पर्टिकुलर कॉन्सेप्ट नोन एज लोड टेस्टिंग और परफॉर्मेंस टेस्टिंग ऑफ एन एप्लीकेशन सो दिस डिपेंड्स ऑन टू क्राइटेरिया फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लाइक वेन एवर एन एप्लीकेशन इज डेवलप्ड सो एट दैट मोमेंट we as a tech ops engineer or as a dev ops engineer or as infra engineer have right to discuss with developers and developers will have to provide us the information based on our requirements such as we have right to ask okay what is going to be the expected traffic onto this application how many tps tran like transaction per second we are expecting on this what is going to be peak r when we will be expecting this much amount of traffic let us say the developer say that we are expecting 20000 hits within a single day at the time of launch of application right but those okay. 20 those 20000 hits are coming within 20 minutes only like let us say uh, the application which we are going to create is only for booking tickets there is a particular known as tat, uh, thing known as tatkal right Okay. Like if, if we are trying to purchase tickets of Indian Railway, so we like we get only the time of ten minutes only to purchase the tickets. So what if all the hits are going to come? The expected amount of traffic is twenty thousand only. I appreciate that, but what is going to be time span of those twenty thousand hits? It's like. Early morning, nine fifty to ten. That is going to be first time window. It means we are expecting at least ten to twelve thousand requests within those within those ten minutes. And let us say in the evening, five fifty to six p.m. Like within twenty minutes, we are expecting twenty thousand hits. So what is the TPS here? Five thousand depends. Like obviously, like we are expecting like one thousand hits per minute. and even it could be possible like within very first minute this this hit may reach out up to 5000 tps 5000 hits per minute right so based on the particular requirement like how many tps are we expecting is it going to be like in a very small amount of time or this is going to like uh, remain uh, like straight straight across the time across the day let us say we are expecting 10 hits per second or we are expecting let us say only two requests per second so what is going to be volume based on those particular recommendation on the, and those input we will ask our developer or our testers which are known as quality engineers as well qa quality assurance engineer right so we are going to ask them okay let us try to test this application into some non production environment where we can decide where we can decide and we can see the performance of that application being deployed to this newly created server so once we will do that kind of load testing so that will help us to identify and that will help us to define the size of this resource let us say developer said we will need 8 cp and 16 gb of ram then you okay. will have a then you will have a particular question to ask okay on what basis do you want us to create these many resources the kind of request which you are telling that can be served with 2 cp and 4 gb of ram then why do we need why do we need that much moreover if developer says that 2 gb of 2 cpus are enough but ram should be 4 gb so you can change the hardware type so basis on these particular testing this particular suggestion input discussion we decide that what is the actual instance type what actually we need to put just based on the developer suggestion we cannot create any specific kind of hardware reason being as per the thumb rule aws has a particular policy that we need to pay as you go you will have to pay only for what you use so there are going to be couple of other suggestions here obviously we will discuss that like how to analyze that how much resources do we actually require within our environment right okay so, so basis on that particular decision that particular discussion we decide the size of hardware Oh. then sir later can we change our uh, instance type suppose uh, so uh, yes definitely we can do that there is no restriction at all but yes there there will be a particular downtime required if you have only single machine within your environment and you need to either increase size of it or you need to reduce size of size of it so you will have to 
shut down the machine first only then you will be able to resize yes. the hardware yes. it will not be done on the fly okay so guys the reason behind that this particular cpu is kept a little cheaper reason being what is the sustained clock speed 2.5 2.5 threads per core one valid core per thread one great total number of cpu 16 great sir valid code for that can you please let us know about little bit that okay wait this is taking a little extra time i don't know why but yes that will work r5 dot earlier it was r5g dot 4x large this time it is r5 dot 4x large so guys right now i'm just trying to tell you that on what basis do we select an instance type someone said that we can create a machine within 2 minutes only that was absolutely true i appreciate that part but yes guys if we are selecting anything we should be knowing the in depth knowledge of it and this is what some what i have learned with my experience so that's why i usually say i do not only teach i share my experience with you guys so this is going to be hypervisor nitro what is going to be here vcpu 16 valid core 2468 threads per core two what is sustained clock speed 3.1 what was earlier 2.5 what are valid threads per core it's a one and two and two what does that mean it means end of the day if there is a kind there if there is a kind of application which needs a lot of context switching guys do you understand what is context switching no okay no, sir. then this is going to be your homework you will understand and you will study about it that what is context switching in cpu how does context switching work so you will understand that then after the within next next within next class we will discuss about it right okay so guys keep this thing in mind that valid threads per core are one and two here the sustained clock speed rate is increased up to 0.6 earlier it was 2.5 within that particular r6 r6g dot x large and now this is going to be 3.1 moreover memory is equal current generation is true if you see the pricing here so that that is also little higher because it is not only going to provide you the particular higher clock speed rate but multi multi threading is also enabled right so guys basis on these particular things we select a particular instance it is just not like that whatever we want we can select that now uh, we have gone through instance type we have uh, we are going to see about launch template so guys what happens whenever we want we can create because aws is such an environment where we can create on demand infrastructure as and when we want right AWS is such an infrastructure where we can create the resources as and when we want. But what yes. if what what if we need to create those instances in very frequent manner and on repetitive manner? Let us say I created an instance today, and maybe after half an hour or so, I need to create another instance. Maybe I want to automate a kind of process that whenever any instance goes down. so this kind of instance should be created where i want to specify the backend operating system the kind of software installed onto that operating system kind of firewall rules which i want to associate with that particular instance moreover where from traffic should be allowed i want to ensure that what kind of instance should be associated with this maybe if i want to start couple of services at the time of machine startup so everything and anything whatever i want i have written in a configuration file right so whenever some trigger takes place so at that moment this launch template will be used it means this will contain every single information 
that we need to provide at the time of machine creation, like image name, like operating system, like hardware information, security group to be whitelisted, which VPC it will be created in, which available design it will be created in, what IP address will it be assigned with, is it going to have only single IP address or multiple IP address, will it have public IP address or no. So every kind of information we are going to write within this launch template and this template will be used going forward. So guys, there is a particular component under like uh, underlying this particular section, which is known as auto skilling group. Definitely we are going to see that the use cases and the utilization of it. How do we configure? What are the best practice of it? So we are going to see that. Do not worry. But yes, for now, launch template is such a component which we use for automation purpose along with EC2 section. Okay. Next, e spot request. So guys, there are three kinds of segments here. We have e spot request, we have savings plan and reserve instances. And there are some differences between both. So when we will talk about like next, like when we are going to create, discuss next time. So I will be telling you the difference between e spot, savings and e reserve instances. So these are something which are related to your cost optimization. If you really want to optimize your cost, then these are the particular sections which you need to look at. Like if you want to have kind of instances, if these are terminated, then it will not impact you a lot. Then you can go for a spot. If you want that any kind of like different kind of instances you want to run, but and you are not sure of it that what you want to run. So you can go with savings plan. We'll discuss in detail later on. Then reserve instance, if you are aware of it, that what kind of instances you are going to utilize in your environment. And you know that at least for next one calendar year from the date of purchasing reserve instance, you are very much sure of it that you will not need any additional hardware into it. The kind of instance which you are going to purchase right now will be consumed for sure for next one calendar year. Then only you can go with this. Right? Then after we have dedicated host, we have scheduled instance and we have capacity reservation. We'll discuss in detail going forward. Right now, I am going to tell you a couple of other options here. Like we have different, different type of volumes, their backups, automatic backups. How do we create? How do we set it? We will discuss about it, about firewall rules, about static IP address. So these are the particular options which we have, which we will discuss going forward. Right now, as this is going to, this is considered to be my test kind of stuff. So I'm going to tell you like, how do we create a particular EC2 machine? Obviously, I will not be able to explain in very depth, at least within today's session. Reason being, because it takes at least one and a half hour to create one EC2 machine. But yes, couple of guys are, are, are listening to me for the very first time. So I just want to tell, tell them that yes, I can create EC2 machine. So towards that, that particular kind of exam. Guys, any questions so far? No, sir. Great. So let us go to EC2 dashboard first. Here, there are two options. Either we can directly create from this particular icon or we can go to running instance. And let us select our uh, reason first. That is going to be Mumbai. So there is no running instance right now. I'll hit here, launch instance. So guys, what do we want in order to run instance? First of all, we need to define a name. So guys, there are two things, key and value when we define a particular tag. So tag consists of two different things. First of all, a particular key and then the value. So it is known as key value pair. So there is a particular key known as name. I am going to define a particular like Linux box. Now, okay, that is fine. Additional tag if I want to define here, I'll define a name here or rather than name honor. I'll define the name here, let us say, Server Gyan. Next tab, tag, I'm going to define your environment. 
I'm going to define here prod. Next tag, what I would like to implement here, that is going to be OS. I'll say here Linux. R-H-E-L. Software. Let us say I'm going to define here Apache. Next. If you want to add any additional information, right? So every kind of information you can add here. So why we are going to define this kind of information here? Let us say, what is use of it? So let us say if due to end, like if, if there is a day when your manager is going to ask, okay, we have three different kind of software. We have the three different kind of operating system like where Ubuntu as software is being used, where uh, for example, your Red Hat as a soft as an operating system being used, and third is Windows. So, if you want to identify that how many operating systems are running with Linux, so you can figure out this particular key along with the particular values. You will you will be able to export this particular data into maybe in JSON file, into XML file, into into sort of your Excel Excel file, and you will be able to run a filter on that. Moreover, you can define a particular like uh, tag here, for example, team. This is just for example, guys. Team, for example, DevOps. So if someone wants to identify that, how much are we paying for the resources which are created for DevOps only, for DevOps purpose only? So we will run a particular like tab here. We will run a particular query wherein we can easily identify that I want to know the value or the particular cost of those resources where uh, like key is team and value is DevOps. This is key and this is the value, right? Are we clear with that guys? Like why, why we are going to define these many tags here? Yes, yeah, please go ahead. So the very first thing here is people usually say to like to enable the identification. So guys, identification can be done in some other ways as well. But when we really want to talk about cost optimization, like how much do we need to pay for what? For which team, for which server, for which environment, for which software, everything can be tracked down here. For example, you can generate a particular pie chart with the help of this particular data. Right? Like how much company is spending on what particular tool and what, what particular component, okay? This is going to be the particular name. Now guys, there are going to be different kind of operating system image, like it is Amazon Linux, it is Mac OS, it is Ubuntu, Windows, and Red Hat. Moreover, we have others, like we have Suze, Nopix, Debian, Mandriva. And if you want to browse more AMIs, which we will obviously do tomorrow, not today, so we can browse the different kind of images from here. For now, we are going to select Red Hat. So guys, there's a particular uh, like component uh, known as AMI, Amazon Machine Image. So guys, usually people ask, okay, what is difference between AMI and instance? So guys, the answer here is that an instance is a running instance of an image. A virtual machine or an instance is a running instance of AMI. So AMI consists of, what does AMI contain? So an AMI is a template that contains the software configuration, which includes operating system, application server, and applications required to launch your instance, right? So whatever is required to launch your application that is already combined as part of AMI. AMI stands for Amazon Machine Image. So right now I am going to select this one, which is known as Red Hat. Moreover, if I want to browse any other one, so guys, definitely we can select it from this particular option, we can search. So there are going to be thousands, maybe like 50,000 images we are going to see here. Whatever you want, you can select it from here. Moreover, guys, there are two kinds of architecture. Either we can select here like x86. This is obviously for uh, like Intel. And if we want to go for like that particular, uh, if you do you remember that we were talking to R6G, 
kind of instance guys do you remember that r6g r6g yes sir okay the same yes, the same way we can select your t4g m4g sorry t4g m6g c6g that kind of instance if we want to select them we will have to select a different os architecture type so we will have to change it to arm if we want to go with intel like m5 c5 r5 so we will have to select this one and guys yes there is an interview question can we change this architecture on the fly so the answer here is no but what is difference between both sir actually so madan as i told uh, and, and as we discussed before so this this is the particular like architecture level difference moreover this this, this is depending on like kind of multi threading single threading this is depending on kind of like uh, like cpu uh, like sustain like cpu uh, like processing repeat uh, speed so okay. multiple things are there which makes a difference so guys these are kind of instances which we can select from here so this is by default selected t2 micro if you want to change you can change the instances from here like it is going to be nano micro and there is a long list here whatever you want you can select it is going to tell you a lot of things like about family about cpu memory about cost on demand price if you want to run it with window window with windows suze like how much will it will you have to pay so these kind of informations are available but for now i would like to keep it very simple like t2 dot micro over here i am going to pay i'm going to have like uh, one cpu and one gb of memory moreover if i want to run it on like on demand price is going to be this on demand windows pricing is going to be this rhl and suze pricing so every kind of pricing is defined here right guys now whenever we create a machine so after creation after machine creation definitely we need a kind of component using which we shall be able to log into it after that we shall be able to log into it right so we need to have a username or new username or password but the kind of image which we have selected over here so this does not allow us to create kind of username or password within this so in order to log into this machine post machine creation we need to have a mechanism using which we shall be allowed to log into it so how do we do that guys we can log in with a key pair like ssh key pair moreover in case of windows so we need a username and password in case of linux we need to log in via ssh right in case of windows we do rdp which is known as remote desktop protocol in case of linux it is known as ssh secure shell so in order to access either rdp or ssh we need to have a key pair now key pair contain key pair is going to be of two type first of all it can be of like dot pam type like the format the format if we talk dot pam or dot ppk so if you are trying to do ssh with the help of your maybe you have ubuntu machine maybe you have linux box you are, you are using mac and you want to do ssh directly like you want to run a command ssh username at the rate server ip address then you will have to download dot pam file but if you are working on windows operating system and you have a plan to do ssh with the help of putty operate putty system right so you can use dot ppk file that will be depending on you so guys we need to remember this thing as soon as we define a name let us say aws batch 23 so guys as soon as i will click on this create key pair so this will not only create a key pair so guys every key pair has two components first of all it is known as private key pair and a public key pair so guys keep this thing in mind public key pair will be created inside aws and that will be copied inside that im instance which we are going to create wherein the private key pair will be downloaded onto my system i need to keep it very safe reason being this cannot be regenerated if this key pair is lost there is no way to recover it we can understand as of today that there is no way to recover it 
but yes because there are some kind of like mission critical production in environment where we cannot bear this kind of loss yes definitely we can bear some kind of downtime but yes we cannot afford this kind of key loss so we can recover that in some other ways but yes by default it is not allowed to recover the particular key pair so we need to be very very careful at the time of machine gen like key generation and key storage right so we have this particular key pair we are going to download now there are two key pairs first of all we need to understand we need, we can generate rsa this is a kind of key pair which we can generate like encrypted private and public key pair it is going to be second is ed25519 so encrypted private and public key pair but this is not supported for windows instances this kind of encryption mechanism is not applicable or is not like supported by windows wherein rsa is a kind of key pair which is supported by both any question so far guys Guys, any question so far? No, sir. Great. Sir, what is the meaning of RSA? Sir? This is a public like uh, alg algorithm. Okay, sir. Sir, <clears throat> uh, Sudhir. So, do we have any alternative to access server, Linux servers, you know, without using SSH? Yes, definitely we have. So, for example, we are trying to log in. To such a machine which we have already created and going forward, obviously within this patch, we will learn how do we do that. So we okay. have okay. created a kind of machine where we have created our own username. We have set the password for the user and we have enabled that kind of mechanism wherein we can log into that machine with username and password. So this key generation will not be required. Second thing, let us say if I have configured my system in such a way where I need not to provide password when I try to enter to that operating system. I like, I need to define username and just with the help of that username, I want to log in. So I can do that. So there is another option. Like if I cancel this right now, and if I go here, select, so there are these options available. So over here, I'll have to select a key pair. Like these are existing or moreover, I can select a particular option here, like proceed without key pair. This is not recommended reason being because if you proceed like this, then you will not be allowed to log into that server because that machine, which currently we have that actually requires one key pair to be created. Right. Okay, sir. Thanks. Got it. But that is applicable only in that case, if we are using such kind of machine, where we have already created and configured kind of operating system user. So guys, sir, yes, please. Sir, in organization uh, dot ppk or pem file, uh, uh, we can access by that. Or otherwise, I mean, how, how to how to access like instances in organizations? So as I told you that if you are working with Windows and you want to access it via putty, then only dot ppk file is required. Moreover there is a kind of software which can convert your dot ppk file into dot pem and mm -hmm. dot pem file into dot ppk so these are interchangeable these are just like file extensions nothing else end of the day both are going to be used for authentication with the same public key pair okay so these are interchangeable you can convert from dot ppk to dot pem and dot pem to dot ppk but yes, initially this feature was not available that we could have downloaded this in .ppk format. But yes, from last past, like maybe nine months, this option has been enabled that users can download the file based on their preferred format. The particular task which we used to perform after creating .pem file, uh, and that then we used to use a software like PuttyGen. So uh, that kind of software we used to use. Now there is a particular kind of firewall rule where we need to select like what kind of security group we want to create. So guys, if we want to select existing, so yes, we have a couple of existing available. Or if you want to create a new security group, you will have to define a name. You will have to define like allow SSH from where, like I want to define from my IP address. If you want to do some kind of other customization here, then every kind of op uh, like op options are available with you here. 
right? And finally, like number of instances you want to create, obviously we are going to discuss more further options. Reason being, uh, like we have here advanced options available here. These many options we have, we are going to skip for now because we need to discuss these options in detail going forward. So guys, now I need to launch this machine. Sir, how many of them will have access to the PEM file, sir? This is also interesting. Well, normal users like you, me and us are not supposed to have access to these actual PEM files. These are supposed to be kept in custody of those senior persons, which we discussed at the time of beginning of the session, like CISO, CIO, uh, head of technology kind of. Only those users are supposed to have access to these spam file. But once again, this becomes a particular problem. Why it is so? Because these keys are supposed to be rotated every single quarter. So those users has to be available while we are performing this kind of activity. Normal users like you, me and us, right? So we need to have our own users created in those servers. And then we need to generate the keys on our system and we need to share the keys to the particular administrator who has access to log into that server and that user will be able to paste our keys inside that machine. So whenever new server will be created or you can call whenever the replica of that server will be created. So our username and our keys will already be there. We need not to worry about that. Okay, sir. So guys, the machine is created now. We can select it and this will display a lot, a lot of information about it. Like what, ha what have we done what has been created so this is talking about details like this is instance id this is the name of instance this is public ip address this is private ip address instance state is going to be like as running there is no ipv6 associated this is public ipv4 dns name provided to this machine this is private ip private ip dns name this is host name which is provided to this machine if we log into this machine and we then we try to check the host name this is this then auto send public IP address is this. What is the type of instance that is T2 micro? What VPC is there where this machine is created? What subnet ID is there where this machine is created? What perform? What is the platform Red Hat? Like platform details Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Stop production not enabled. AMI name. This is this launch time when it is created. You can see that here. What is the key pair associated AWS Bash 23? And rest of options are available here. Same thing, we can go, we can go and we can check for the security options here. Like this has enabled port 22 from this IP address. If you want, you can modify this. Need not to worry about it. Just open the security group and you will be allowed to modify the rule based on your requirement. Just hit here, edit inbound rules. And you can add other rules. For example, I want not only to enable SSH, but yes, I want to enable HTTP as well. For example, I'll select here where from, like my IP address, and that is it. I can save this rule. So now this server, whatever I have created, will be accessible on port 22 for SSH and port 80 for HTTP from my IP address only. Are we clear with that, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, now there is an interview question. Okay, how many ports do you allow for outgoing? Okay, for example, once I have logged into the machine, once I have taken access into this particular machine, so now how many ports will you allow for outgoing traffic? So the answer here is by default, AWS allows all traffic for outgoing. If you log into this machine and internet is available, you can access to any available IP address over the internet without having any problem. Clear guys?
this information is about networking about ip address public private vpc every kind of network related information you will be able to see here this is for the storage like how much how many volumes are associated which is size is it, is it encrypted or not that kind of so we will see like how do we encrypt this volume kind of then after here is status check whether the machine is running fine or not whether the underlying hardware is running fine or not this is about monitoring so these are the default monitoring here and these are the tags obviously we kept only one but we can add the tags later on as well we can add and edit later on as well so yes guys that is it for today any feedback for the session guys very nice sir very smart sir so informative yeah, session uh, it's having a lot of content related uh, class so you know even uh, i have a little bit of experience you know even uh, i learn lot of things from you sir thank you for the kind words sir yeah my pleasure <laughs> it's very nice thank you yeah and also i have small query sir is there any chance to uh, change the content from one availability zone to another availability zone is it possible no once machine is created a uh, mic only it can be possible only after migration okay sir okay thank yeah. you that's it uh, 